No, bro. Like, none of the ways you're thinking of works, bro. If the camera falls, what you gonna do, bro? The camera ain't gonna fall. Why would it fall? Ain't nobody moving it. That life was made around the time that you was really steering the ship of our music direction. Like, if we was in, what was this, Clubhouse number four on Fungi and Willow then? Yeah, so that life was, yeah, I was Fungi and Willow then. And I was at work in D18, and Cuddy was at the house one day and it was recording. Cuddy was coming over all the time, like doing his DJ shit, mixing songs and shit. And this nigga had, uh, this nigga had rap to that Chirac, and Nicki Minaj and Slade that home. Um, we was like, bro, we gotta get this nigga on the track. So him and DAT had made, uh, they had made, DAT made that beat. Um, that life, this is a track I had made. Start off with this, uh, I sat with Kid Cudi, um, soundtrack to my life, soundtrack to my life, yeah. I sat with Kid Cudi. And then baseline, it was a real, it was a real skeletal beat. You know what I'm saying? It was done when when everybody started like when I like when I when my verse on it, everybody said it was done. I stopped working on the beat, so that's why the beat is just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Right around the time, Yummy Venom made Hundred and Willow Band mixtape, so it was a bunch of songs that you had in store just making music with everybody who came over. He was the one who would make music. He had the beats. When fella come over, fella would make beats with that chick. And then, I would come over and this is like around the time I felt like we should make something, release something. So I came up with the concept of Burn. And then I wanted that life to be the first song because I like the way it came in, right with the hook. And I wanted that sound to be right after the How High audio clip. And I liked how he got the feature from Cudi because Cudi was coming over a lot. And basically I just really liked it, that song. I liked it how Yummy Venom was still going hard. So I was still, I think it said Yummy Venom featuring Cudi because Yummy Venom was really strong making those stuff throughout the course of that time. And I wanted to showcase at the beginning of the mixtape, Dedrick's ability to come up with these type of songs because his hook was something that he was doing a lot. The way he did his ad-libs at that time, it was sounding real live and I wanted that to be known from the jump, like, hey, this is what we coming with. These niggas think they know me, but they really don't. They really don't. Like, we got the hood behind us type shit. Like, it, it just sounded real thug. Uh, with that life, I try to get people to understand that everybody is everything. You feel me? Like, at, at the same time, it depends on the life that you, the situation you're in. You know what I'm saying? But. It's hard when people think that you're being fake. That's why that's how, that's how the whole song starts off with it. Like, I try to make it um, be vulnerable at the very beginning of the song and let you know that I'm using somebody else's lyrics to enhance. And then right after that, talk about rappers. Like, talk about how rappers are rapping. Like, nobody's listening. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not contradictory. It's just like, it's explaining exactly what it is. It's like, if you want to be a cold rapper, you can't give a fuck what nobody thinks about your raps. But at the same time, cold rappers listen to certain rappers. They think they don't talk about shit. They feel like you ain't talking about nothing of that sort. They're like, just, just those thoughts, you know what I'm saying, as a rapper, that's, that it played out as those lyrics. Which is, I feel like made people like the song, I guess. But that's just a perfect thing to say because that's how they feel. And I know that for a fact by talking to them that they feel like people are afraid of them. Like, I guess, somebody who's not with the shits. They think they're afraid of them. 
So anyways, uh, oh, it, at first it was just my part on the song, yeah. It was just my part on the song, and then Cuddy's verse was so long that I put my part again after, just because it it was lopsided as far as the song was. So I made it, put it at the ends just so it could be like a full song. So then when Richie came in, added it at the end again, it was like the hook. So it became the hook, but first it was just what I had recorded already to to the beat, to play for to play for Cuddy, so he can be like, oh, let me hop on that, or let me see what I can do. On you feel me? So it was it was so how it ended up being the hook to the song because it's long and it's somehow catchy at the same time. But it was a verse; it was written like just my part. You know, and I always start rapping at the very beginning of the song, so, you know what I'm saying? It could have been anything, you feel me? I was just actually building my verse as the beat was building. I built it in that, in that way, like, first it's calm, then it does, or whatever the case is. I start off slow, saying one thing here, one thing there, one thing there, then making rhymes, and making jokes, then having a point, then repeating the point, repeating the point, and then it became a hook. That's how it happened. When it became a hook, I had to uh, do something. I didn't want to do the same thing. So I made the ad-libs come in, people yelling. Cuddy's on there too. It's funny, at first I didn't like Cuddy's, the, the way he did it. But then now, I, I like. I wish I should've made him do it more. You know what I mean? But uh, his his voice on that, because it was me and him yelling on that. Just to liven it up, to, 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 to see to bring back that point, you feel me? Because he he tells the story and he brings back that point. You know what I'm saying? What's he, he introduces himself, Cuddy Rick, nigga. And just goes back into, you think you know me, but you don't. You know what I'm saying? Just stating real nice facts. It don't have to be, like, I wasn't trying to be lyrical or rappy in no way. I was trying to be, like, how I would write a verse. How I would build a song. I would build a song by stating, you know what I'm saying? I think it come from Otis. Jay-Z and Kanye West type, they was just stating shit. If that's where everybody hopped on board, it was just my part at first. And Cuddy had a verse already, a verse that he was rapping, that he would rap all the time, or that I heard him rap before. And Cuddy hopped on, and his verse was like fucking, like 28 bars, some crazy number of bars, I wouldn't even know, <laughs> no real structure. He killed that hoe, bro. And nigga, uh, what did nigga say, bro? Uh, <laughs> hey, job man, I right on the launch. I'm Southwest, Southwest, chilling on farms, man. I got my phone, and she said she got my lunch. That's how he went. Could he got bars, bro? Ooh, with the play shit. Yeah, I remember the day we made that life. We were in the, we were at the fan clubhouse, at the clubhouse, and uh, everybody was in there, like any other day, posted, chilling, smoking, doing all that, all that, you know, usual, normal, common procedure, and uh, T got on, got on the board, he started, started doing his stuff, started doing his stuff, placing things where he needed to be placed with the, with the, it was kind of like a guitar, piano kind of sound, kind of, kind of crazy, and uh. You just did one thing to the other, one thing to the other. Next thing you know, we had had the layout, and he was he was fixing it up. And uh, Richie started, you know, doing what he do, like kind of like freestyling to himself, kind of, or, or really just being in his zone. And uh, you know, Katie, he <laughs> he was turned up like the whole time as usual. You know, he got he got one. He got one speed and that's go. You know, twenty five eight. He got one speed and that's just go time. Full speed, just doing his stuff. And I remember kind of just lingering in the back, kind of just like, yeah, I think I got something for this. I got something for this. And uh, I can't. That's the only thing I really can't remember is who went uh, first in the booth. But I do know. I remember Katiz was in the room and he started kind of like mumbling to himself like. Uh, <laughs> these niggas think that you know me, but they really don't. I got that now, fellow. I hope you feel it, though. These niggas think they know me, but they really don't. Kind of just kept repeating that over and over and over. And, and fellow wasn't even in the room at the time, and I think that's why 
he was saying, I hope you feel it, though. I hope you feel it, though. So I remember, and then, I, yeah, yeah, like, he, he went with the rest from there and, uh, you know, he just jumped in the booth, laced it up, had the shoelaces tied up, and, and went to work and uh, laid that down. It was, it was something special, though, for real. Really, really something special. It, it just sounded real, though. I like the way Richie came in, sounding like the hood. Richie kills the verses. Well, I don't have to explain that. Richie killed the verse. And he kind of rounded out the song to make it sound like a real song. When Richie heard it, you know what I'm saying, of course, at that time we were young and little going there, so the fact that Richie was the last person to record the verse on there, you know what I mean, it lets you know how the song progressed, you feel what I'm saying? I always know that songs progress different in the order of who goes first and who goes second. Gangsters acting like they we should be scared of them, just normal poetry, it's just, that's poetry in motion. What the fuck that means. But, yeah, I forgot about that. You got two versions of the verse. Yeah, bro. And I heard the nigga verse, and I was like, yeah, bro, I gotta help on that, up, bro. And I think I had a different verse at first. I can't remember, bro. I, I, I think I changed my verse to the verse where I was like, let me make this shit more like the hook so it's like it runs smoother. I can't remember what this shit, I can't remember how this shit goes, bro. It's recorded somewhere, lost. Lost in the sauce, but it was it was something, bro. But then I changed it to that shit. That shit, that shit I think this shit worked out real good, bro. That's probably one of my favorite songs that we ever made. Like perfect ass type of hook, perfect verses, niggas rapping real good, and the beat is live as fuck. I was like, yeah, that shit could be on the radio. Like, nigga was killing shit, bro. That was that was around the time niggas had like a string of shit that was like that burn was. It was some shit that didn't go on John Doe, but that, like, and then it's some shit that me and Dadrick was working on for Yummy Venom. Like, it was, we, we had some shit, bro. Like, yeah, that was, that was a lot of ass time. The solution to that, they're talking about shit. They write their raps the same way you write your raps. From Jadakiss to fucking Lil Yachty, you know what I'm saying? Jadakiss look at Lil Yachty, know he's sitting there like you with a pen and writing his shit and thinking about it and living life and writing this shit the same way you is. But anyways, it's not even the shy of Jadakus. I was just using Jadakus. But, um, yeah, Cuddy came in and laid this, this long ass verse and it was just throw. It was, and it was just so long, I was like, you know what I'm saying? The beat is not that much. It wasn't like a bunch of cymbals or a bunch of synthesizers. So, when this verse was long, I just did, you know what I'm saying? I, had to, I, I always be telling myself to keep it simple. Somebody told me keep it simple, stupid kiss, right? And like, uh, so I, I just stripped it all the way down, just had the bass playing. Boom, 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 boom. And then it just changed the whole feel. And it was on the perfect part where his verse changed. But then it changed one more time. It was the. Uh, uh, and just had that part. I just broke it down so niggas can hear the beat, because that's around the time when niggas gave a fuck about shit like that. You know what I mean? And it was just an a easy way to keep his verse exciting even to the point where he where he ended it he said his name could he rick nigga then uh these niggas think they know me they should drop back in and then it was crunk and then me and Cuddy did the hook the second time we did the ad to this shit we was yelling in the hook the shit i was doing um it's just like people yelling yelling your words you know what i'm saying it was almost my it, it's kind of like what i seen the ad libs were back in those days like the ad libs when they were out that's why I, that's why I seen them ass or something. Or, or, I heard them, or, or I heard somebody do that or something. Just, you know what I mean? It's like something that's on free loops. There are the sound effects on free loops. I would just do my own. With the people on the song. So. No one is cool unless he pack around. But if he ain't, then get this straight. Go pack he out, now pack him out. Everybody claim that they pack it now. But they let you in the club after they pat you down.